Western Electric 755A. Well, you know guys, this is still the best American full range speaker. There's so many good things out there. Um, European speakers, uh, lots of undiscovered, uh, interesting American full range speakers, and uh, just, just lots out there. But this, this is still the best we ever found for detailed mid-range. And uh, they're just so, so good. And um, I, first of all, I want to say hi. This is early at Hi-Fi Town. And I want to say hi to all of my uh, customers and, uh, and acquaintances and also everybody on the Hi-Fi Hi Haven website um, forum. And uh, I, I know lots of old friends are on there. And uh, this, this video I kind of made for everybody on there, as well as some customers and other folks that have run into this issue. This is probably going to be a serialized um, set of videos on the Western Electric and Altec 755A specifically and what there is to learn from it. But uh, uh, the main issue that came up, and this is a bit of an emergency video, is that there have been some uh, reconed 755As that have been making an appearance into the market. And uh, I know of a couple of folks that have purchased these unknowingly and uh, uh, it can be very difficult nowadays. When I it, this didn't used to be an issue, and when I say it didn't used to be an issue, it didn't used to be an issue because there weren't any cones available. For many many decades, the only uh, cones available for the 755A uh, were actually from Alltech in Oklahoma City, and uh, Alltech never really sold a 755A cone. Not not in not in recent times, anyhow. Uh, and what they did was um, they sold 755C and D and E cones. And um, there were other things, you know, there were there are other cones that were available and were used. And when I say it wasn't really an issue, it's because, you know, the Altec cones were not available. And, uh, you know, about, Walt and I bought this cone about 25 years ago. And uh, it's actually pretty, it was, it's actually a pretty well done knockoff 755 cone. But it's very apparent when you look at it. It's a it's a lightweight paper. It uses the kind of European style uh, screen method for forming the shape. And you know, just generally, the measurements aren't perfect. Um, so this one probably came from Asia. And uh, you know, Walt and I purchased it from a, a good friend who restores speakers and is an expert restorer. And uh, his stuff is nice and. Uh, it's just not an issue because you you could never put this in a 755A and not immediately recognize you know that it was that it was a recone. But about uh, ten years ago, um, what happened is is um, I purchased you know some of these, which is uh, I immediately recognized this as a possible original new old stock. Uh, seven, let me get the center here. Uh, 755A cone. And uh, it doesn't look at all like a 755E cone. Uh, and I'll get into that in another video where it doesn't have as many rolls. But, um, so uh, let me cut here to uh, tell one of, um, of what to watch out for. And uh, this, is a, this is an original Western Electric 755A here. This is a, a, crinkle, a crinkle gray finish one, the one that was in the background. And uh, has, of course, everybody by now knows about the Western Electric um, Deming stamps that go around the edge here, and uh, those were, you know, those were wet. that's an exclusive feature to Western Electric ones. But here is uh, here's here's a, a, a friend's one that he sold this as a original 755A, and you'll notice the, the large gaps between the gaskets right here, and uh, that uh, that's not a normal factory condition uh, for any 755A. So you notice that there's at most maybe a Oh, I don't know, half a millimeter, maybe in some cases, a, maybe in some cases, you know, maybe a millimeter gas, you know, something like, a, you know, maybe almost a millimeter gap here. They can be here. And uh, that varies, uh, but Altec and Western Electric ones were pretty much the same. So watch out for that. Now that, you know, this, these gaskets were probably replaced. It, they're very difficult to remove. You have to use a lot of solvents. And that leads me to, that leads me to the other thing you need to watch out for. Um, when you're looking, when you're shopping at seven, you know, for 755As, uh, there are seals and fabrics on them that uh, that that are generally tampered with when they're recoated. Now, in the case of my uh, the friends here, uh, the gasket on the back, there's there's some pry marks, there's some um, 
missing paint here and a misalignment. Now that, that indicates that somebody removed this. Now these are possible to remove, they're not hard to remove, but mostly if you're not really familiar with them and the solvents to use and, and this and that, you leave marks and prime marks and sometimes they're even torn. So watch out for a torn back cloth gasket, that indicates for sure a repair or possibly a recoat. Uh, the other the other thing, and this is not this is a little bit trickier. Uh, Western Electric and Altec have they have seals here, and this is not to remove the cone, but this is to loosen the spider. Now Western Electric used a variety of colors of seal material. It's a type of old plastic resin, kind of like a liquid, possibly like a liquid celluloid or something like that, or it's a hard glue type resin. They vary from white to gray. And um, Altec uh, then switched to a couple of different materials. Anyway, long story short, when we work on these, or when I've worked on these in the past, when we do restoration work on the 755A, we save these. These can be removed and not destroyed. But most of the time, reconers or people who aren't careful will break them and not replace them. So, so if you see screw heads, flat, specifically flat blade screw heads here, uh, that that's a bad sign as well. That means somebody's been trying to kind of get into the speaker. What does it hold down? It holds down the spider. This is the damper out of a uh, damper spider out of a 755A that I was using to do some audio experiments on. And uh, this this spider here is kind of permanently installed in the speaker, so you can't really do much with it, you know. But um, but uh, so when you peer underneath the speaker, you want to look for glue marks on the edge. Again, messy signs that it's been uh, worked on with solvents or anything like that. Usually there are, there are stains. There are also stains around the gasket here. If you can see here, the uh, let me get this back in focus here. Um, you know, there's going to be a staining or glue resin if somebody's been if this has been if these gaskets have been lifted up and put back down again. There are going to be um, stains and things like that. So, so if we look very, very closely at this cone, you'll see around the dust cap a rounded edge, a very slight rounded edge. This rounded edge is actually where the coil basically attaches to the uh, to where the voice coil attaches to the cone, and uh, this is the way it was done on the 755E meaning that this cone was kind of designed based on the 755E. Now if we go and take a look at a Altec or Western Electric cone, I'll use, go ahead and use the Altec in this case. This is again, this is a hammer tone. Let me spin it around here. Hammer tone Altec here. Apologies for the out of focus pictures guys. I'm using a manual lens. Um, it's a macro lens. We can get some good detail here. Um, if I get really close, you can see, you may be able to see there's almost a, here we go, there's almost a 90 degree bend right here where the coil attaches. It's a sharp bend, it's a deeper bend, there's more of a, a crevice around here. There's a crevice around here where the coil attaches. Um, and it's in some ways, and I, I don't know, this is a theory of mine, I don't know, there's in some ways a little bit more defined on, an, on a western cone. This is a beautiful western cone here. Um, you know, maybe if I hold it at an angle you can see it. That's a pretty good shot right there. So if you look at this, you'll see there's almost, there's a very crisp transition from the cone to the coil. It's a sharp, I would actually say, close to 90 degree transition from that. The... The imposter cone, we'll call this the imposter. I call these, uh, by the way, I call these Ohio cones because uh, the manufacturer is somewhere in the Midwest. But um, these cones are, again, they have, let me get this really close here. There we go. So look at this really closely. And you'll see it's a rounded, it's a rounded shape right there. And I have looked very carefully, and I do believe this is the way the 755 C's and E's were done. That's, that, of course, is the ceramic pancake magnet. Now, um, looking at my customer's, uh, or sorry, my friend's um, photos of the, the speaker he was sold, um, and uh, again, there's some there's speakers on eBay now that are like this, so watch out. Um, and uh, we, he, they're also uh, noting here that there are some white letters, some odd white letter markings. Now, again, you saw mine had the 227. Watch out for the white letters. The white letters, there are no letter markings on Western Electric cones. So if you see that, that's a dead giveaway as well. Um, 
So we got uh, we covered that, and here's a here's a close up of of this person's uh, co you know cone here, and you can see um, you can see it's kind of rounded there too. So you know that's and then also lastly, it was peculiar, and I want to say not all Western Electric speakers have a nice uh, resinous coating still of, of the air, of the um, Airflex type coating that they received, but most of them still do. You know, some of them have gotten old and dried out and that sort of thing. But it, it's generally, generally all of them survive with some amount of that left. Um, they all had it. If it does not, or if it has kind of like a hard kind of like lacquer coating, watch out. That's that's a bad sign as well. That means that it's it's been dropped in and they they didn't have the right solution to put on it. So um, so I hope that uh, gives you guys some warnings. And uh, some know-how as far as shopping for 755s, uh, you know, use common sense. And uh, now that they are so expensive, I think we're going to see quite a few more recons. Lastly, I wanted to address one important issue: is um, am I bad mouthing these cones? Do I think that these cones here? Let me reach this. Uh, these cones that I were, you know, I've sold about 10 years ago. Um, oops, there we go. Um, are these a bad thing? No, I don't think so. They're not so much a bad thing. But they, bad things can be done with them. So if you have a 755A that has a destroyed cone, this is a truly a godsend. I think I've seen them online for maybe about $70 each or something like that. I think they're well worth that, actually. Well worth, I'm going to say, piece of paper here. This is well worth, uh, well worth the money, you know, maybe even up to 100 each. I mean, if you have a 755 that has an absolutely destroyed cone, and, and more importantly, you can recover or recone it and spare the original coil here, like that, um, then you ha you can do work wonders. Just don't sell it to somebody as an original speaker. That's that's the main goal here is to, to watch out for that. So, um, you know, just watch out for imposters on there. Know what you're buying. You know, try to figure out if it's original. Look for those signs that I mentioned. And, um, and I'll address, maybe I'll go over this again next time. I also will, you know, maybe in, in next episode of this or whatever, I'll... I'll show some comparisons to a, you know, to the the pancakes. Just be careful out there. And uh, if you ever want to, uh, if you're shopping for 755As, I sell them occasionally. I have a kind of a waiting list on them right now. Um, I, everything I sell is all checked out. I go through kind of like the, uh, you know, 200 point inspection on these things. And so I'm backlogged. I don't have any listed for sale right now. But uh, you know, if you're if you're looking at some and you're just biting your nails and you don't know. You can always send me an email and I'll try to help. You know, I don't, I'm, resources are limited here and time is limited. And lastly, I wanted to say if you guys like this video and you want more of this sort of stuff, um, hit the like button. And the last, last thing I wanted to say is I am planning, um, same friend who has, is in this conundrum with 755s, wanted to commission a repair video on 755s where I do some repairs, you know, because the best thing to do is not recone a 755. It is the best thing to do is to repair it because uh, most most problems uh, most problems that you encounter on these things can be fixed and if if the speaker's playing well then there's then you know you shouldn't do anything to it except for just address the problem that it has so in the meantime I just want to send out uh, helpful information so that uh, nobody gets burned on a set of these so again look for a nice one like that and uh, you know you know most of the signs of the original if you're watching this video but just go over again, go over that checklist of gaskets, uh, messy glue resin, and then lastly, this very, very esoteric issue with the uh, feature of the original where it has the, uh, the sharp bend around the voice coil connection. Anyhow, for now, I'll leave it at that, guys, and uh, have a nice um, holiday season.